This one hopefully is a little more palatable to watch since I've done my hair and makeup today. <laughs> I still have on the same earrings, um, my cow horn earrings. And this is my $1 thrifted dress. I'm just sitting out in the veranda. It is raining and it's a perfect day for this Pacific Northwest girl. So one question I forgot to answer the other day was what do I put on my hair? So about a year ago, I had ombre done here in Uganda. So dark all the way down and then they basically like ratted up my hair and then put some lighter stuff on the ends um, just for fun. And so then you can see I still haven't done my roots, but that's fine. Um, and then I just use whatever five, five number I can find in town for a dollar or less. <laughs> so that's usually like Garnier or um, in the States you could get like nice and easy, but like a five would be your medium brown, I think. I'm not a hairstylist, but, and then I just do the roots. Um, and then, so like the last time I was actually at the hairstylist was a year ago. And then I just chopped my own ends. So that is my answer. Number five, whatever box is cheapest, and then put it on my roots. Usually about every two weeks. So if you've been here for a while, you know that before I was going to go gray for a while. And then in the end, it wasn't my husband's favorite idea. So I am staying with my natural-ish brown. I mean, this is about my natural color. Um, so I'm staying with that for now. And I'm 43, so maybe 45 we might revisit it. Or 50, I might revisit it again. So, oh, do you want to come sit? Um, she's out playing in the rain, but decided that. Oh, oh, you're gonna sneeze. Okay, hang on. Okay, so what I want to talk today about is contentment and choosing contentment as a means to live simply and to um, live frugally. Because I find that when I am discontent, that is when I overspend. I want things that I don't need. When I want some a different life that I don't have, um, and wish for things, you know, more than what we've been given. And so, you know, contentment really is at the core. And I've talked about this on videos before. I will link. I think I did a five things to let go of to embrace contentment and simplicity that is um, a good video to start with and then this one's just gonna be a little bit more chatty kind of the same idea so I don't come by this as somebody who's a Pollyanna who's always just been so excited and loved everything that she's ever been given I come from this if if I can choose contentment now it's hard one I have been somebody in my life who has always wanted what other people have I have always wished for something different than what I've been given. Um, in the 20 years of us being overseas missionaries, first in Alaska above the Arctic Circle, then in Indonesia, and now here in Uganda, I've never chosen my house. I've never owned a home. I haven't chosen my own house. And that was a real sticking point for me. And this house that we have, Yapo. So this house that we have, this is our veranda, Mommy, porch, whatever you, yeah, shh, can you let mama talk? I'm sorry. It's okay. That's fine. Oh, it's okay to interrupt. That's what, that's what I'm here for. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm here for you to interrupt. <laughs> but if you could just give me a few minutes to chat. Um, Hi, my name's Sonny. <laughs> yep, your name is Sonny. Okay, now are you going to be quiet? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so this house that we have, um, we were given when we moved here six and a half years ago and you know, I don't love it. Uh, I'm going to be honest. The house is really strange. Wonk, wonky is the word I would use. Um, we You're have wonky, my friend. wonky. Yeah. What wonky? <laughs> okay. Hey, how about. Let's pause this and you go find something else to do for a few minutes because I feel like you're going to steal the show again. Is that going to happen? I think so. Thank you. It's 
We've got weird rooms. The kitchen is dark. If you've seen my videos, um, I've got weird light fixtures. I've got small rooms with weird kind of, you know, passages. My laundry room is in a weird place, right? Um, and sometimes I can get really, well, especially in the past, um, the Lord has really allowed me to become content in the past couple of years, but I've really struggled with where I live because I love to make a space beautiful. I would prefer to have a small house, a little tiny house that's well laid out and beautiful. Um, so it's not about the size or how much space I have or how nice it is. It's just, I would love a better layout. Um, and the Lord really convicted me. Well, and I think I've said this in many videos before, it's not difficult for me to look far, like literally across the fence, um, to see people living in actual need. And so it's really convicting when I see people who don't actually have even close to what I have and I'm complaining about the thing that they wish they had, right? And um, that's incredibly convicting to me. So I have running water. My laundry room in, is in a weird place, but I have a laundry, you know, I have a washing machine. Um, most of my friends and neighbors do not have that. Electricity, another thing that I can easily take for granted. Having a gas stove in which to cook or an oven in which to bake. Again, things that I should not take for granted. And um, at the end of the day, like I love nature and I don't have to go far to really my yard is incredible. Um, in fact, I'm gonna just turn this around so you can see my boys are out jumping in the rain on the trampoline. Hang on. You can see way out there. But these trees were planted by a previous missionary that lived here. Um, all the things that we have are really such a gift. And um, we have plenty of space to grow food. We have plenty of space to grow food for our neighbors. This is our my community garden down below, um, where I'm growing maize and sweet potatoes and pumpkins and sukuma wiki and dodo, which is all things that grow easily here. And of course, there's tons of bananas and papaya is growing down there as well. But um, this is a gift. I can sit out here every single morning in this little veranda and make a fire although i'm not very good at making fires well daddy um, makes his show towards fire daddy makes good fires doesn't he um and so who am i to complain what a beautiful gift this area has been been for us especially during lockdown when we've been able to isolate when we needed to and then also just invite neighbors in um to enjoy play soccer jump on the trampoline etc so i just want to ask you um, what are the things that you're finding really difficult to stay content about sorry this is a weird angle uh, and what things can you look at to be thankful for um, right now what is it right now that you're looking at in your life that you're like oh man if I just didn't have XYZ then everything would be fine, like me in the past, and sometimes even in the present. Um, what are the things that you wish were different? And then can you turn it around and say, but I am thankful for this, 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 right? Can we choose contentment? What's that? I don't know. That'd be bad though. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, go ahead. Yeah, so what are the things that you can look at to be thankful for in the midst of not having it exactly the way you want? And I, again, I'm preaching to myself. Um, and, you know, the Bible talks a lot about contentment. And um, I don't know the exact reference, but, you know, godliness with contentment is great gain. Choosing to be content with what we have and be thankful for what we have when it's not the ideal thing. Um, that's huge and I think it's also a really an, an amazing testimony for the world they will know we are Christians by our love and if we are content and showing love from our hearts for what God has given us I think that is a huge testimony and right now girls 
I think this world can use a lot of Christians who who have some love in their hearts. And so if contentment leads us to that love, I say, here, here. <laughs> um, I just wanted to make that a little bit short and sweet. And I would love to hear in the comments, how are you choosing contentment? How are you choosing to be thankful for the things that you have that are not ideal? Um, and what is it that is keeping you going? And then, yeah, I want, I would love to have a conversation. Just how can we choose contentment? And then that can spur us onto simplicity and frugality. Um, because it actually becomes a pleasure. And I know I always talk about coffee with Kate. Um, she always talks about how much fun it is to live simply and how much fun it is to live frugally. And she's right. It gets more fun as the time goes on. It just gets fun. Um, and it's so exciting. And you can find pleasure in the simplest of things. Um, and so that's kind of what I want to say. Um, as we pursue the Lord and pursue... Right okay, you be right back. Simplicity in our hearts in our lives, in our wardrobes, in our houses, in our families, um, so that our, our space, our brain space, and our heart space can be freed up to be even more passionate about all the things that he's called us to. I would love for you to subscribe down below and hit like to this video if you did like it. Um, I, again, I'm loving just coming on and chatting. It's kind of my new favorite thing to do um, because before it was like so much stress to make a video even though I'm not even that good at them but just making them God bless all the people that spend hours video um, editing if you again if you're gonna see me it's gonna be like this and it's very freeing for me so I appreciate all the good feedback keep it coming um, hope I answered your questions about the the hair it's very simple and um, yeah have a great day, week. I'm praying for you, and God bless you, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Say bye. Bye. You gonna blow a kiss?